For the Clemson Tigers, obviously their game plan focus has shifted because of the suspension. You have to play with the cards you've been dealt with, and Cliff Ellis is planning on doing just that today. Well, when this game is over, and if Duke is victorious, the one thing we can say is that Clemson never had a chance. But the beauty of this game is that you've got to play it between the lines, and that's why you say never say never. Now, Duke, uh, Clemson's going to have to really play loose today. A lot of their players have their major college experience in practice. So they're going to have to come out and play it just like a scrimmage and have some fun. The other thing they have to do is spread their offense a bit. Duke loves to play a helping man-to-man. -man, and if you spread the offense and isolate the ball and the defender, you may have some luck hitting some cutters in for some shots. But we should point out that it is just not so easy is to go out there and sit on the basketball. When you put a stall offense in, that's something you have to practice. Clemson has not had that luxury, although Cliff Ellis did tell us they have been working on it yesterday just a little bit. And just as importantly is the fact that these players may not have played on the same unit together. Therefore, it's going to be a lot of difficulty in determining when back doors should be run, who to hit, and when to hit them. So it is going to be very difficult to hold the ball today. For the Duke Blue Devils, as we mentioned, they're out to break a three-game losing streak, and I know that maintaining their intensity is a major key today. Well, Duke needs a win. They've got three consecutive ACC losses, and they have to remember they can't come in here and relax, wait for someone else to do it just because they're not playing a SWAT team. And that's mostly important for the big men because Duke has a sizable advantage inside. They're going to have to really control their three-point area, um, keep the Clemson Tigers from shooting those shots, but also inside, they're going to have to claim that lane as their own. Not on the offensive side of things for Duke. Obviously, Clemson's just going to pack that zone defense and tight as in tight of that lane as they can. Outside shooting, at least at the start of the game, is going to be a key for Duke. Well, Duke is really going to have to get their shots off. They have problems with perimeter shooting this year. Somebody's going to have to take responsibility. All right. That's our matchup. Clemson and Duke, the Mazda game plan. We'll be back to meet today's starting lineups as the Clemson Tigers meet the Duke Blue Devils in just a moment. Atlantic Coast Conference basketball from Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Duke Blue Devils play host to the Clemson Tigers. To the lineups and Dr. Art Chandler. First for the Tigers from Clemson University, a 6'4 freshman from Greenville, South Carolina, number 11, David Young. A 6'3 junior from Malone, Florida, number 13, Derek Forrest. At 6'8 and a sophomore from Baconton, Georgia, number 44, Colby Brown. Six, seven, and a senior from Brooklyn, Georgia, number 21, Jerry Pryor. And at 6'7", and a sophomore from Pendleton, South Carolina, number 25, Ricky Jones. Clemson's head coach, Mr. Cliff Ellis. And now for the Blue Devils. At 6'3", and a senior from Mercer Island, Washington, number 14, Quinn Snyder. Standing 6'4", and a junior from University Park, Illinois, number 3, Phil Henderson. Standing 6'10", a junior from Bloomfield, New Jersey, number 30, Ella Abdelnabi. 6'5", junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Number 21, Robert Ricky. And at 6'10", and a senior from Bowie, Maryland, number 35, Danny Ferry. Head coach for the Blue Devils, Mr. Mike Krzyzewski. Clubs of Tigers and the Duke Blue Devils here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Clubs that comes into the game at 12 and 4 overall and 3 and 2 in the ACC. Duke after the three consecutive losses to 13 and 3 overall and 3 and 3 in league play. Duke has lost only one game here at Cameron this year and that was uh, over a week ago against the University of North Carolina. And Len Elmore, the Buick matchups. Well, you take a look right now. Jerry Pryor is a good defender, and Danny Ferry is probably feeling some of the effects of a 10-day layoff, at least. And, you know, look for Jerry Pryor to try and make Danny Ferry work as well if Clemson decides to spread it out. The only scholarship player on the Clemson bench is Kirkland Howling. He's coming off arthroscopic knee surgery, so we'll have to wait and see just how long and how hard Howling can play. 
Danny Ferry back in the Duke lineup. McClemson wins the opening tip. Paul Hausman, Rex Gagliata, and Sam Croft are officials today. This is Colby Brown, guarded by Ala Abdelnabi, who's back in the lineup today. And we've got a foul inside on Robert Brickey. Bumped in there was Ricky Jones. Here's a look at the Clemson bench, and only two men at uh, Coach Cliff Ellis' disposal. On the far right is Dennis Hoff, who is the team manager who is suited up today, joining Kirkland Howling on the bench. Into the lane, pumping and missing, was Forrest, and the rebound to Ferry. Interestingly enough, Clemson's playing man-to-man -man right now. You figure that they're not going to be able to put too much pressure consider considering the fact that they've got a very short bench. Man-to-man, Lenny, but uh, everybody within a step of that painted area. Snyder outside. Ala Abunabi follows, misses, rebound to Clemson and Jerry Pryor. He's 10th in the AC at six rebounds per game. Jones saved it, but right into the hands of Ala. Very faking. Now passing to Bricky. Fake the three, fake the two, then fed it inside. Well, good ball movement. Bricky made a nice cut inside. Danny Ferry, always awake, saw him. Derek Forrest. Colby Brown making his first collegiate start. Ties the game. Count the basket and the foul on Colby Brown. Again, though, nice move by Colby Brown. What happens is we have an isolation, man-to-man, -man, a lot of Abdelnabi on Colby Brown, and Brown, recognizing his quickness, goes around him. But there's that Duke helping defense again, Danny Ferry, right there to take the charge. You felt, Glenn, that Cliff Ellis, in spreading the floor a little bit today, in slowing down the pace of the game, would be able to isolate and do some one-on-one -on -one maneuvers. Right, and that makes it difficult on any defender playing just purely one-on-one. Glenn -on Snyder hitting a three-pointer for Duke, and a steal. Mental Outside. error. Mental error by Clemson that time. Barry, out of Snyder. 5-2, to Duke leading. And a steal. Derek Forrest jams at home. Well, it's one of those right back at you. That time, Robert Bricky. Another mental error. Rather than dribbling over and getting a better passing, passing angle, just tried to throw it in. And a demonstration of the great leaping ability of Derek Forrest. Makes it a one-point game. Snyder outside. He's got another one. A major key, Len, for this Duke team if Snyder can start filling it up from the outside. And the foul on Quinn on the inbounds play. But here, Bricky, as I said, did not get a good passing angle. He just tried to throw it cross court. Gave the defender ample opportunity to cut into that passing lane. Glenn Schneider hitting just 29% of his three-pointers coming into this game. He's nailed two, and Duke leads 8-4. That's a travel on Jerry Pryor. So Clemson turns it over for the third time. And the Tigers fall back defensively now as Quinn Snyder brings it up. 17-20 left in the first hand. Watch the low post area, people. Anderson missing, rebound to six foot four freshman David Young. Clemson low post area people were not willing to go out more than a foot or two away from the lane, giving up that perimeter shot. Inside Pryor, got a good pass from Young. Well, that's what's going to happen. If you can beat someone off the dribble, you put a lot of pressure on the defense, people can slide in for passes just like that. Barry to Bricky. Roberts got four points off two great passes by Ferry. And give Bricky a bit of credit for getting good position, spreading out and really demanding the ball inside. 10-6 Duke. Well, you can see just how valuable Ferry is as the Tigers throw it away. On the defensive end, he takes a charge. On the offensive end, two expert passes in the paint. Thompson has turned it over four times now. And Duke has a 10-6 lead. Anderson, three-pointer. And Abdul Nabi pushed off to get position, and that's a foul. So Allah picks up his first. 
of what's happening. Again, Aldenabi knows he's got to get good position, but this time he allows himself to be blocked out. Now, he may have pushed with the body because his hands are at his side, but he's got to fight for position, recognizing that when his teammate's ready to shoot, he's got to fight and get in there. Allah goes out. Crawford Palmer, the freshman from Arlington, Virginia, comes into the game. And the 6-2. Pryor lost control. Palmer diving. Pryor gets it back at his knees. And that's going to be a travel. Gained an advantage by going to the knees. And that gives it over to Duke. 16.07 left in the first half. And the Blue Devils leading 10-6. Now with that turnover, we can see Clemson's plan unfolding a bit. But what's Number happening four. is the players are too close together. That's still allowing Duke to double team the ball. And what they have to do, Clemson, is really get set first then start moving the ball once they've established 15, 20 foot intervals. For Clemson, number four, Kirkland Howling is into the game. And going out, Jerry Pryor. 10-6, Duke on top. Perry. Got it. Danny's first basket of the game. League's leading score at 22.5. Duke has doubled Clemson here. Colby Brown dishing to Jones. And Henderson the rebound. But that was a play that was designed and it's probably right within the game plan. Nice dish off by Brown. Just missed the shot. Lob to Crawford Palmer. Thanking, thanking, hitting the foul. Personal on David Young. Well, Crawford Palmer gets nice position. Kobe Brown fronts him, a nice lob pass inside. Good pump fake by Crawford Palmer. And although he didn't get off the ground for that shot, the pump fake allowed him to gather his balance, and he still followed through with the shot. Crawford Palmer, 6'9", 225, and a physical player indeed, averaging just under two points per game. He has struggled with the free throw line. Missing this one, and a foul against Duke, and I think it's on Greg Kubek. Well, Kubek fell into the same trap that Al Donabi did. When you're blocked out, you really can't go over top. You've got to get around. A timeout on the floor. 15-15, left in the first half of Duke, leading Clemson 14-6. Now, this word from Bud back at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Clemson, as we've chronicled, has dressed just seven for this game, including the team manager. He's wearing number 32 today, Dennis Hoff. He's from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And an interesting note that we came across on Dennis is the fact that he is a second-generation manager for the Clemson team. His dad was a manager for the basketball team from 1961 to 1964. And Dennis now not only films the games, but when he's not playing, <laughs> he works as the team manager. But in that lineup today, maybe he'll get into the game. 14-6 Duke leading, Colby Brown missing. And a rebound controlled by Quinn Snyder. Clemson is now three of six from the floor. Three white shirts in the blue paint area. No Clemson jersey available for the offensive rebound. It's something else that they've got to concentrate on. And Crawford Palmer. Nope, it's going to go against Colby Brown of Clemson. Good defensive play by Colby Brown. He's very aware of the pass coming across court. Just made a little contact with Palmer. Second foul on Colby Brown. 14-6 is the score. Duke is leading. They keep a close watch on the fouls because with only seven guys, it could be a problem late in the game. Here's Forrest. Now outside, Kirkland Howling. Tipped out, and the ball belongs to Duke. Boy, the longer this game is played, Len, uh, Clemson getting just the one shot. Well, they haven't sent anyone. They have spread the floor, but the guys who aren't shooting have to realize that when the teammate's ready to shoot, they've got to bust it to get the position. Here's Snyder crashing in. Glenn with eight points, and Duke leads by ten. No weak side help for Clemson. Duke with a wet-hot pace from the floor, howling short, and a rebound to Henderson. Shut off by Pryor. Outside it goes to Snyder. Blocked from behind by David Young. Good athletic move by David Young blocking Quinn Snyder from behind. He's beaten the first time, but he recovers very well. Keeps his eye on the ball. and Doesn't make contact with anything but the ball. 
Offensive foul, Greg Kubek. So Duke turns it over. Duke Speaking of David Young, he is six foot four, a freshman out of Greenville, South Carolina, one of the heralded South Carolina high school players from a year ago. Robert Bricky returning for Duke for Phil Henderson. But he's got the size, Len, and the ball handling capability to turn into be a pretty good guard for Cliff Ellis. And this is a good chance for him to get some experience and, and recognize that he does have the skills to play here, get some confidence. And picking it up is Brookie. Duke running three on two. Back to Brookie. And that's blocked by Pryor. Picked out of there by Clemson. Forrest, 4-3. Three. Three. He's an outstanding three-point shooter. He rates fifth in the league with that, his 26th three-point field goal. And the Duke lead is seven. Well, here's a good opportunity basket right now. We're please playing with a unit that's not obviously Clemson's first unit. They take the opportunity. When they have a good shot, you might as well take it. And what happened there is that there's nobody around. David Young shaking up on that last play goes out, and his replacement will be Ricky Jones. 16-9, Duke 13-20 left in the first half. Glenn Snyder's hit two, now three, three-pointer. Quinn Snyder's getting hot, and Kirkland Howling watched him, but with his hands at his side. You've got to get a hand up on guys shooting from three-point range. Make it a more difficult shot. 19-9, Duke leading. 13-minute mark of the first hand. Jones. And Aldo Nabi claims it. That was tough luck. I'm sorry about it. Tough luck for Clemson, but what they did do is spread the floor the way they probably should this game. Dubek off the hands of Fryer and Duke Ball. And if Duke gets one thing out of this game other than a victory, if they can get Quinn Snyder going, shooting the basketball like he did last year when he hit 45% of his three-pointers, boy, a major, major key in this Duke offense. Really opens things up inside. Abdul Nabi missing and a foul. Colby Brown in there along with Jones and Pryor. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Duke big men have got to claim this lane as their own. And Abdul Nabi asserted himself there. He got good position right in front of the basket and went up strong with it. Well, that's three fouls now on Colby Brown. David Young returning. Cliff Ellis just can't afford to get in a physical contest. Well, we got to realize also that Duke still got a couple of fresh big men on the bench and Christian Leitner and John Smith. So Mike Krzyzewski can just shuttle them on in and thin out that front line, the very fragile front line of Clemson. I'm not sure that Cliff said exactly these words, but it's got to go against the player's nature somewhat, Len, when you, you're used to competing and mixing it up and then all of a sudden say back off. You just can't do it because we don't have anybody to put in. And more importantly, they haven't had an opportunity to practice backing off. it in. Derek Forrest with seven now for the Tigers. Good recovery and good patience by Forrest. He pulled up his dribble in the wrong place, but recognized had nothing to do but shoot it, got himself together. John Smith. Hits his own rebound. Brian Davis, the freshman from Maryland, and now rookie around to Henderson. And we've got a holding foul called on Kirkland Howling. That will be his first. The junior out of Los Angeles. Good baseline drive. Kirkland Howling getting beat and getting beat to the side where he's recently had orthoscopic surgery. So he's a little bit slow there. A timeout on the floor. 11.50 to play. First half. Duke 21. Clemson 11. Will return after these messages. Stay tuned for Holly Farms Player of the Game Awards brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of chicken. Bob Rathbun, Len Elmore back at Duke at 11.50 left in the first half with Duke leading Clemson 21 to 11. Duke has hit 8 out of 17 so far, just under 50%. Clemson did a 5 out of 11 from the field and Phil Henderson connects. Two-point field goal for the junior from University Park, Illinois. Duke leads by a dozen. 
Sterling fumbling, losing. Pryor inside. Jerry, no, and a jam followed by Ricky Jones. Oh, my, great. And that's what Clemson has to do. If they've got the court spread and guys are in particular spots, when that ball goes up, you've got to crash, and Clemson did at that time. Talk about a jam follow for the highlight reel. Here's Abdul Nabi missing. Rebound tipped out of Smith's hands and picked out of there by Derek Forrest. Clemson trailing by 10. David Young, met by Brian Davis. Lost control and a foul on Davis. We were talking about that uh, last Clemson offensive opportunity, the miss by Pryor inside. Watch Ricky Jones. Well, right now you see no one in the picture, but here, perfect opportunity. Both players recognize there was an opening under the basket, and they went after it. You know what that's like back when the rim's about chest high, when you go up for those jam follows? Many moons ago. <laughs> At the line, David Young. And he hits the first foul shot, just a 50% shooter to date but 67 percent in league play David Young he's already been named the ACC rookie of the week this year and back in December 23 15 Duke on top just under 11 minutes to go here in the first hand Again, a very sagging man-to-man -man played by Clemson. They're giving up an awful lot behind the three-point line at this time. Daring Duke to shoot it. And praying that they miss. Ferry whips it across to Bricky, but a three-second violation called against Duke. And although a three-second was called on Abdel Nabi, I think Mike Krzyzewski likes to see that because he knows Abdel Nabi is ready to rebound. He's going for position right away. The unfortunate part was Robert Bricky didn't put it up in time. Howling is fouled by Henderson. Tough to penetrate that Duke defense with the dribble. That time Howling was able to draw the foul. But if you get him spread out, Bob, what you can do again is beat any defender off the dribble if you've got the ability. And Kirkland Howling has the ability to do that with the floor spread, the ball in the middle where there can be no help side. It's a prime opportunity for him to go to the basket. Howling a 64% foul shooter this year. His last game was against Wake Forest on January the 14th, and he scored 18 in that game. He's missed the last three. Actually injured the knee on January the 7th against Maryland in a home game. Did not have the arthroscopic surgery until the 17th. Goes one for two at the line. Brookie in front of Forrest for the rebound. 23-16. Duke leading 10-20 left. First half. Brookie in the lane. Rebounded by Jerry Pryor. And that time Clemson had the board covered very well. Jones. And the rebound to Henderson. And we've got a foul called on David Young, giving Ferry a shove. That'll be the second foul on David. Well, that was probably an unnecessary foul. David Young, knowing that they're giving up that three-point shot, or at least a shot that far beyond the three-point line, didn't have to fight. Didn't have to fight around the pick. They're giving that shot up. Quinn Snyder's two steps behind the three-point line. He's not going to hurt you from that far. There's no need to try and fight through the pick. Just wait till he comes off. Ricky had the shot blocked. It hit the 45-second clock. And the ball will go out of bounds to Clemson. 9.49 left in the first half. Duke 23, Clemson 16. And the Tigers with Kirkland Howling coming up. Clemson still feels like they have a shot here. They're still playing with intensity on the defensive board. Five-second violation Five against seconds. Derek Forrest. A little bit confused on that one. No one really knew exactly what was going on, and that's the problem when you don't practice as a unit. Clemson right here had an opportunity to, to cut the lead down, but no one knew exactly where they should be. Consequently, Derek Forrest had to hold on to the ball. Thompson has turned it over seven times. And he very just off of that back shot just a little bit. Here's David Young to Jones for the jam and a foul on Henderson. Excellent, excellent two-on-one break right there. David Jones made the defender commit to him, then gave it up nicely. 
Here we see a four-level view of it, and Jones makes Snyder commit, and there's no one trailing. Henderson trails, but it's a little bit too late. Ricky Jones. Tremendous athletic ability here. These are the opportunities Clemson will look for if they crash the board as tenaciously as they have been. They can get out and run. They've got some great athletes, some good ball handlers out there. Ricky Jones, a former South Carolina Player of the Year, McDonald's High School All-America, redshirted his freshman year with surgery on his shoulders, has scored five, and Clemson is within four. The Tigers have scored eight unanswered points and are trailing 23-19. Sort of a nervous cheer among the Duke students here as the Blue Devils attack. Walter Palmer getting out of the lane, but now a foul. And it's on Brookie for throwing a forearm, and Duke turns it over. Well, that was purely a frustration foul that time. Brickey's trying to get the man off and trying to get loose inside. Right now, tight defense by the Clemson defender. Brickey doesn't have anywhere to go, so now he just wants to push his way through. The only problem is Paul Hausman standing right there. Stoic Mike Krzyzewski on the Duke bench. Clemson now with some free throw opportunities. And Derek Forrest will go to the line. He's a 61% shooter. He's got a one and one opportunity. He leads the Tigers today with seven points. Misses the front end. Clemson had a chance to get it within two. Now Duke with it. The Blue Devils have gone cold. They've missed seven of their last eight. So the ball gets into the hands of number 35. He misses. Crawford Palmer, let's see, a foul. And it's on Clemson's Ricky Jones. Danny Ferry with a nice move inside. Drew everyone's attention. Everyone's head turned to Danny Ferry when he made the move inside. Christian um, Palmer was able to get inside with everyone's head turned right underneath the basket. Crawford Palmer is 0 for 1 at the line today. He has shot just 28.6% this year. This is another. And Jerry Pryor clearing for Clemson up the floor to Kirkland Howland. 23-19 Duke with 8.35 left in the half. And we've got an offensive foul on Ricky Jones. Well, that time Ricky Jones made the move. He had his mind made up what he was going to do with it as soon as he grabbed it. The only problem is... He's got to be able to pull up, see where the defense is. Robert Bricky stepped in nicely. Ricky Jones couldn't stop himself. So, number two on Jones, Colby Brown, started at center for Clemson. He's got three, and the Duke lead is four. 8.25 left in the first hand. Bricky, and that is going to be a blocking foul on Jones. Three straight possessions went, and three fouls on poor Ricky. Well, here's a situation where Bricky gets the defender to commit. Ricky Jones looks like he's in good shape, not dissimilar to the last play on the other end. Here's a side view of it. Good position by Bricky. Jones is there. Feet are set. But again, we're not on the floor, so we can't make that call. But Cliff Ellis took his jacket off. He wanted to make the call, that's for sure. Interesting that the call did not come from under the basket, but from the wing. Bricky. At the line, hitting his first free throw today. That's his fifth point. Robert, who had more free throw attempts than any other Duke player last year, has shot just 56% at the line this year. And the rebound comes to Derek Forrest. Duke leading by five, 24-19. 8.15 left in the first hand. David Young, a turnaround three-pointer, and he drills it. Just like in practice, Bob, you guys want to come out here and have fun. I believe the Clemson Tigers, the longer they stay in this game, the more they believe they have a chance, and Duke is aware of that as well. Here's Ferry into Robert Brookie. He puts it in. Nice touch by Robert Brookie, not known for his outside shooting touch. Nice little turnaround. 26-22, Duke, 7.40 left first hand. Gary Pryor. Derek Forrest for three. He's got it. Derek Forrest has scored ten points. He's got two home run shots. And Clemson is within one at 26-25. Banging inside and another foul on Duke. And again, it's on Robert Brookie. 
Well, that time Bricky set a down pick, and he wasn't set. What you got to do is you got to be set when the contact is made. Robert Bricky was found moving his feet. 7.21 left in the half, and Henderson off the bench. He comes in. Bricky goes out. Kubek is in. Now, Kubek jacket is going out of the game. But Palmer, Smith, Ferry, Henderson, and Snyder out there for Duke, and Colby Brown is going to the free throw line for Clemson. And Bob, when we spoke about Duke maintaining their intensity, we went on talking about enthusiasm because they have it out there. But their heads have got to be in the game. They've got to know what they have to do here. And a lot of times, people are now trying to do maybe a little bit too much. Forrest rather than Brown stepping up to the line, and Derek missing. Now Duke with a one-point lead. Well, you're right, Len. Duke got off to that 12-point lead in fairly quick fashion. Snyder missing the three. Rebound to Pryor. Clemson has a chance to take the lead with this possession. Eric Forrest. David Young. Tipped away by Snyder and out of bounds. Good off the ball coverage by Quinn Snyder. And a timeout on the floor. 6.46 left to play in the first half of the score. Duke 26 and Clemson 25. Now this message from Bud 25, Duke 6.46 left in the hand. Well, with this uh, Derek Forrest three-pointer, it's been the culmination of a series of plays that got Clemson with two within one with Duke, and Clemson's been playing almost a pitcher's battle here. They've gone a little bit inside, and they've come outside. But they've gotten the job done regardless of where it's been so far. The fouls are mounting up for Clemson. But I'll tell you, Len, that three-point shot covers a multitude of sins. Inside, Forrest. Tipped out by Henderson. Clemson ball. The Tigers are 9 of 18 from the field. Duke is really cool. They are now 10 of 25 for 40%. And you see, you just saw Cliff Ellis imploring his team to move. He's got to make the guys move. They can't stand around here. That's the essence of this offense. Keep people moving and create some openings in order to pass the ball. Howling, missing, rebound. Controlled by Christian Leitner of Duke. Danny Perry. Beating Henderson. Now back to Snyder, and Duke sets it up. 6-10 left in the first half. The Blue Devil lead is a point. Hudson has not led in this game. Snyder is open for three. And Smith had it knocked out of his hands by Howling. Now, if you take a look, when the Duke players are moving the ball along the perimeter, they're starting to scream out directions. And to me, that tells me that maybe Duke's thinking a little bit too much out here instead of playing instinctively. And that always interferes with your ability to get the job done. Ferry. He misses. Ferry is one for four from the field. And again, the Tigers come down the floor with a chance to take the lead. This is where playing as a unit is very important. When you get to a position where you can take the lead, everybody's got to know what everyone else is thinking. And quick hands by Jerry Pryor knocking the pass away. This is David Young, and he puts the pass behind Forrest and out of bounds. I believe Clemson's had three opportunities, maybe four, to take the lead. We've been stuck on 26-25. Well, the problem in that position is that the defense knows it. They're bearing down. The offense... These guys have to know what the other guy is doing, and this Clemson unit just hasn't played together enough to know that. Very pumping, faking, firing, and missing. Rebound inside. Leitner, yes. Christian's first basket of the game. 28-25, Duke. And as we said, it's such a luxury to have some quality big people to keep bringing into the game. If one doesn't get the job done, you can always bring someone else. And a steal by John Smith. Up to an uncontested Gwen Snyder. On that particular play, Bob, there are only two Clemson defenders who even got over half court. I'd have to say they're getting a little bit winded right now. Certainly one of the key factors was Smith on the steal. Quick hands by Henderson, but look, you've got two Duke players ahead on the break, and only two Clemson players even got over half court. 4.43 left. The Blue Devils jumping to a five-point lead. 
Head coach of the Tigers, Cliff Ellis, pacing in front of the Clemson bench. You see his suspended players sitting attentively as Clemson now brings it up. And Kirkland Howland plays to David Young, a three-pointer. He's got it. David Crowd silencer. Young. David Young has got the feeling right now. And if you took a look at a suspended Clemson player, you know they're in agony right now because this game is close. They'd love to be in it. Ferry. Got loose inside. He got the pass and put it in. 32-28, Duke. And a foul. And it's on Danny. That'll be his first. John Smith outside sees Danny Ferry alone in the middle. Brown had his head turned as well as prior. No one really recognized Danny Ferry standing under the basket except for John Smith. 4 11 left in the half. And Jerry Pryor to the foul line. Just 61% shooter at the strike this year. Jerry's scoring has fallen off just a bit line. He's been in double figures just once in the last nine games. Well, the last time we saw Clemson play at Wake Forest, Pryor never really got into the offense. He goes one for two at the line, and Clemson trails by three. Leitner, travel. Good catch by Leitner, but fell off balance just a bit, had to regain his balance, but he walked. The good hands inside. Too close together. Clemson is too close together on offense. Ferry and a travel. It's a good call. Once you go down with the ball, you can't get back up onto even onto your knees. Yeah. Gaining an advantage. And you'll see it here by Ferry. Well, right now, three Clemson players together. Ferry goes down on the floor. Now he gets up on his knees, and that's a travel. So Clemson has it. Young, rebound Leitner. Ferry, yes. Clemson, Danny was six. They can't allow Danny Ferry to go one-on-one -on -one like that, leaving Jerry Pryor naked. And a steal by Ferry. Behind his back pass is a bad one. And it's intercepted by Forrest. A little too early for the showboat. Danny Ferry had a much easier play to make. Young inside to Colby Brown knocked away, but Kirkland Howling has to shoot it. He misses it. No rebound to Henderson. Schneider lost control of it. No rebound to Jerry Pryor, Clemson, and Schneider got away with a walk that time. Boy, that he did. 2.40 left here in the first half. 34-29 Duke. David Young finds some daylight, reverses, and puts it in. Another athletic play by David Young. He used the basket to shield off the defender. I really like this young man. I think he's going to be a whale of a player for the Clemson Tigers. 34-31 Duke. Here's Smith inside. Followed by Leitner, no. Rebound to the wing. Pryor saves it. Tight ropes the sideline. And the pass knocked down by Snyder. They really scrap it. Ford and Snyder's got it. To Danny Ferry. Great action. 155 left and Duke leads by five. Clemson got caught in a transition situation there with a loose ball. People on the floor, too, not too many people back. Missing the three, Henderson the rebound. Bill with some good work on the boards today. Surprisingly, Duke is slowing it down just when you've got a Clemson team that looks tired to handle the ball tiredly. Duke is slowing it down a bit. Very short with this one. Leitner, yes. 6'10, Christian Leitner working inside. Well, right now, Clemson's got nobody that can really deal with Leitner inside. No size at all for Clemson. Young, a runner, is no good. And Henderson, another rebound. 
Cliff Ellis was upset with that shot and should be. Barry misses. And the rebound to Derek Forrest. Tigers outnumbered, but Forrest fires and misses. And the rebound to Snyder. Now with four guys in the lane, four Duke players in the lane, all of the Clemson players over the front court line, you know Danny Ferry is back. Why take that shot? 30 seconds left in the half, and Duke has gone up by nine, 40-31. Clemson visibly tired right now, having a lot of trouble just handling the ball. Time remaining in the half, eight seconds, seven. Howling for three. Misses. Rebound, Henderson, and that's the half. So the Clemson Tigers under head coach Cliff Ellis putting up quite a fight in the first 20 minutes. Two factors against them, fatigue and fouls. Colby Brown and Ricky Jones with three each. But give Clemson credit. They've played Duke, except Glenn for the last two minutes, to pretty much of a standoff in the first half. Well, I'll tell you what's happening right now. Cliff Ellis is going to go in the locker room. He's going to say the same thing. You guys withstood an awful uh, push in the beginning by Duke, and we got close, but then we made some poor decisions. And a couple of them were, when you took shots too quickly, allowed Duke fast break situation. And I think, you know, if they go in and they can rectify that, come out here in the second half with a little bit of a blow and play the same way, they'll be in decent shape, at least to keep this game close. Duke knows that they have a battle on their hands. Halftime at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Duke Blue Devils trying to break a three-game losing streak and trying to shake a pesky Clemson Tiger team. 40-31 at the half. This one, a final score, Ohio State knocking off number three, Louisville, 85 to 79. And Texas in the Southwest Conference today ripping SMU 96 to 65. And with the Oklahoma Sooners uh, winning yesterday over Las Vegas, Louisville goes down to defeat, Georgetown goes down to defeat. I tell you, in Illinois losing earlier in the week, I'm wondering who's just going to be number one tomorrow. Well, I don't think anybody wants to be. Every time you get close, you wind up getting knocked off. I think it's the old number one jinx coming up this week. And it certainly uh, is a case for parity in college basketball to see so many good quality teams at this Holly Farms, America's number one brand of chicken. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the AC City to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That's the Holly Farms player of the game to be awarded near the conclusion of our broadcast. Bob Rathman, Len Elmore back at Duke, and let's take a look next at the U.S. Air halftime statistics. They revealed Clemson shooting 40% from the floor, Len, on 11 out of 27. Duke hot early, but uh, finishing at 43% on 17 out of 40. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that's glaring is the rebound differential. Here, Duke out-rebounding Clemson by, by actually 13. But uh, more importantly, I think they've gotten at least 10, 11 points in transition um, from offensive rebounds. They've gotten from turnovers, the same types of things. The points off turnovers is 11. The leading scorers in the ball game for the Clemson Tigers, Derek Forrest and David Young with 10 apiece. And each of those gentlemen with two three-pointers apiece. And Duke with uh, Quinn Snyder on top of the heap with 13. Danny Ferry scored 10 points in that first half. Robert Brookie contributed seven. If Clemson is to get just one shot, Len, that puts a great premium on field goal accuracy. But the way they were able to shoot those three-pointers in the first half, if Forrest and Young can keep that going, you know, you pick up three for two, that's not a bad exchange for us. Well, yeah, but you really can. You live by the jump shot, oh, three-pointer, yeah. you're going to die by the <laughs> three-pointer. And what Clemson had been doing for a period of time, as I said before, was playing a little inside, a little outside, taking what Duke gave them. Duke with it to start the second half. Glenn Snyder at the point. His running back guard is this man, Phil Henderson. Leitner, Ferry, and John Smith, the frontline starters here in the second half. Henderson. Just in front of a three-point strike. And for Henderson, his second basket of the game at four points. I look for Duke to really extend their defense right now, overplay the wings, try to deliver a knockout punch early. Young missing a three, the rebound out to the lane, and Jones, and a foul on Quinn Snyder. 
Well, that was a good range rebound or attempt at a range rebound by Jones. When the ball flies off, as it does from this three-pointer, you know, you've got to have good reaction here to go after those rebounds that, that require you to have some range. And Jones did a good job getting there. Down in to Ricky Jones. Gary Pryor. Too long. Tipped out by Henderson. Thompson ball. Bill Henderson thought that he was going to get a call. He thought he was pushed out a little bit by Kirkland Howland, but both guys going after the ball, and the contact was incidental. Kirkland Howling lobbing it inside the bad one, and Ferry baseballs it ahead to John Smith. Well, John Smith leaks out. Clemson players make a mistake, and they all look at each other, and John Smith took off and caught everyone by surprise, except for Danny Ferry, who hit him with a perfect pass. Well, you see Christian Leitner hitting the floor with the palms of his hands. That's the signal to the Duke students to start the cheering for the defense, and Henderson made a great play as he threw the ball off the body of Derek Forrest, and Duke's got it. And here's where the poise is very important for Clemson. They've made two crucial mistakes in the last two possessions. Now they're starting to look down. You can watch their eyes hit the floor every time they make a mistake, and that's not a good sign. 44-31, Duke. Leitner, Ferry for three. And Pryor gets it up ahead now to Kirkland Howling and the Tigers attack. Ricky Jones. Too strong with the back shot. And Duke is running. Clint started behind the back to Henderson. Clubs a timeout. Well, you look at Duke, and they came fired up for this beginning of the second half. Nice outlet pass by Ferry. Gets it cleared real, real well, and here Snyder with a behind-the-back pass. Henderson gets a good spring inside. Look for the foul. 18-16 left in the ball game. Now this from Natural Light. The second half field goal shooting establishing the tone for Duke. They've been three out of four and come out smoking. Clemson's 0 for two with two turnovers. And the Blue Devils lead now by 15 in a near turnover by Kirkland Howland. Penetrates. Short. Rebound Leitner. Ahead to Snyder. And here comes Duke. Snyder to the basket. Well, in both cases, we saw a player try to take it coast to coast. Kirkland Howling ran into a helping Duke defense. Quinn Snyder had a wide open lane, and that's been the difference in this game. The biggest lead, 17 for Duke, and big trouble inside for Ricky Jones. This is as fresh and as sharp as Duke has looked in quite some time. They are doing it at both ends. Well, I'm sure that they had the riot act read to them at halftime. And the guys just probably awakened to the fact that they have the better team, regardless of who they have out on the floor at this time. And they've got to assert themselves, and assert themselves they have so far. 17-36 to play in the second half. 48-31 Duke. John Smith, a three-pointer, and he's got it. Twenty point Blue Devil lead. Near steal by Henderson. Across the lane to Howling. Forrest. Missing. Rebound Leitner. Outlet to Snyder. Still just a little bit too much enthusiasm by Quinn Snyder. That time he wasn't under control at all. Had really no one to pass to going to the other side. They get the feeling as Ricky is in and out. Bonabi comes into the game. Duke has outscored Clemson 11-0. On that last possession, they wanted to take it from a 20-point lead to a 30-point lead in one, one possession. Well, I'll tell you, for the Clemson players, unfortunately, the scrimmage is over. They recognize they're in Cameron Indoor Stadium right now, and they're behind by 20 points. Young, bottled up, calls the timeout, rather than suffer the five-second time violation. But what that means is Clemson has only one timeout left for the ball game. 
16-44 left to play at Cameron. Duke leading Clemson by 20. 51-31. Duke leading here. 16-44 to play. The announcers for this game approved and selected by Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. And a rebroadcast, retransmission, unauthorized duplication or reception of this broadcast without the express written permission of Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Duke 5 out of 6. Clemson 0 out of 4. And it has gone from a 9-point Duke lead to a 20-point Duke lead just like that. 51-31. And the Tigers with it. And a bad pass off the rim secured now by Ala Abdel Nabi of Duke. Another Clemson turnover. And that gives them four this half. Here's a pass inside. Abdel Nabi putting it in. Well, Abdel Nabi again got good position inside. Something that Duke has been able to do all game. Clemson mistakes have been made by some players who are rather inexperienced. You know, you don't just don't throw the ball through the basket like that on a pass. Gary Pryor, Clemson looking for its first second half points. Colby Brown, he misses. Tip no, rebound to Henderson. Off the leg of John Smith, Clemson ball. It was a good thought by Henderson with the bounce pass, but again, bad angle for the man in the middle to throw the pass to the wing. Eric Forrest. Got off by Alla. Back out to Colby Brown. Pryor. He'll try a three-pointer and he misses. Tip up and in by Jones. Good ball movement. Clemson, I believe, for the first time this half, finally got the type of shot that they wanted to, and they had the board covered. Ricky Jones has had some elegant offensive tipping for the 53-33. Duke leading. You know, in a situation like this, this is the time for Duke to work on everything that they practice, particularly with their half-court offense, just like Abdel Nabi. Nice move to the basket. The foul on Ricky Jones that will be his fourth. Abdel Nabi gets the ball in good shape at the top of the key, sees an open lane and drives nicely. A little bit of um, showmanship there. Now with Jones with four, keep in mind that Cliff Ellis has been one scholarship athlete on the bench today. He has dressed out the team manager, Dennis Hoff. And now it is Abdel Nabi at the line for Duke to shoot a pair. His fifth point today. Holler coming off a 24-point night at NC State when he started for the injured Danny Ferry. He had just 16 points in his preceding five games before the state game. 55-33 Duke. Young mishandling it. Bricky dives and saves it. Gets it over to Snyder. Quinn to the basket. Tip. No. Henderson rejected and goaltending on Colby Brown. Oh, what great hustle by Brookie to start that sequence. Well, you couldn't tell that Duke was up by 24 with that hustle, but Robert Brickey shows why the Duke team has a lot of pride. They expect to win, and they come out here playing hard regardless of the score. Duke University's Blue Devils certainly. Here's a dot of bounds. Off prior. Always got it. You get the sensation, Len, that Duke was just stung so severely by that three-game losing streak that they want to come out today and reassert themselves as a force in this conference. And in the second half, they've ju done just that. They've done everything that's expected of them on defense as well as offense. That's a travel on Abdul Nabi. Clemson has turned it over six times here in the second half. Duke now with a couple, and Clemson's turnover is up to 19 for the game. 57-33, Duke, 14-35 left at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Bad pass, Duke ball. The problem with the Clemson offense right now, aside from the Duke pressure, is the fact that they're getting people to go down underneath, but they're not getting anyone to pop out. They're not setting any picks to free anyone as an outlet. So the ball handler is stuck with the ball. That's why there have been those number of five-second calls and misplays. 
Abdul Nabi is fouled, and I believe this one's on Derek Forrest. I think the point you made earlier, Lynn, was a very good one, and the fact that the five guys have played the bulk of this game, you wonder how many times in practice or in games that these five have played together as a unit. And it's more important when it's a pressure or crunch situation, and we can look to the first half when Clemson had three opportunities to take the lead, and three times they turned the ball over. And that's really attributable to the fact that these guys for the Clemson Tigers right now have just not played together enough, and a lot of them do not have the experience of this type of basketball. Aldo Navi, a perfect 5-4-5 at the free throw line today. Set an ACC record hitting 20 straight field goals over four games earlier in the year. Missing that free throw attempt. 58-33 Duke. David Young driving. And Aldo Nabi with a good head of steam clearing that rebound. Here's Danny Ferry. Leitner. Well, that's the luxury of having a big lineup like that. Danny Ferry just threw over the Clemson defense. Nothing they could do about it but watch as Leitner grabbed the ball and laid it back in. go with that pass but uh, he is fortunate that the ball was kicked and it was kicked uh, well they're gonna which way is it gonna go it's gonna be Duke ball kicked by a Clemson Tiger and again Bob on that play did you see any Clemson Tiger pop back out everyone stayed in the lane and they left the ball handler all by himself very popping Danny's first second half basket 12 points for the game 62-33. Forrest. Tried to backdoor alley-oop lob. Colby Brown misses. Brown follows and scores and draws the person. Nice move by Brown. Good hustle inside as he gained control of the ball. Drove inside. Missed the shot but had presence of mind to grab the ball and lay it in. Lob pass blocked by Danny Ferry. But Brown grabs it. Now he misses the shot but he goes right after it again. Nice pump fake here. Gets the defender off his feet and lays it back in. Now for both teams... These last uh, 13 minutes are important because you're giving players who haven't had the opportunity to play a chance for some experience. It gives Duke a chance to get Allah Abdelnabi an opportunity to get off and play really well because they're going to need him down the stretch, although he's not in at the moment. But he had an opportunity where he was really given the ball and force-fed. Clemson do the same with the guys who don't have experience on their team. 62-35 Duke, 12.50 left in the second half. Here's Ferry. Inside, Leitner pumping. Now we've got a whistle, and I think a three-second violation against Duke. Leitner with the traveling violation. Here's a look at the score by Haz, and you see Duke is just running away from Clemson here in the second half. 62-35, Duke 12-3 left in the game. Kirkland howling at it, blocked by John Smith, and ahead to Robert Brookie, and it is showtime. And with that fast break, again, only one Clemson player crossed half court. The rest of them are dragging behind because they're tired. Cliff Ellis got nothing that he can do about it. Misses. Brown tips and misses. And we've got a foul on Colby Brown of Clemson. It will be his fourth. So two Tigers, Jones and Brown, with four personals apiece. Well, Clemson, with a couple of players who are in somewhat of a funk, they just can't replace them right now. And they've got to live with it. 64-35, Duke Blue Devils still 11-45 left in this game. Danny Ferry, great dump pass to Leitner. Well, now Clemson can only offer token resistance, so they'll be playing this game with the student manager out on the floor very shortly. You got any eligibility left? At 37, I don't think it would matter. <laughs> <laughs> Howling. 
Outside to Derek Forrest. Tipped away by Snyder. Stolen by Ferry. Back to Quinn. Snyder's going in. Score it. The route is on. 68-35. And Cliff Ellis and the Tigers can only sit and suffer. Pryor to Ricky Jones. Rebound to Leitner. No one can crash the boards for Clemson. No one can contest on defense for Clemson right now unless they play with four men or Dennis Hunt. Outside, Brookie. Two-pointer. Missed it and a foul on Derek Forrest. It will be his second. 10-38 left. Speaking of Dennis Hobb, I guarantee you the, the first time Cliff Ellis looks down to the bench, he's going to be ready to jump up and tear off his uh, warm-up right now. Mike Krzyzewski going to the bench here to insert Clay Buckley and Greg Kubek. Two shots. Two shots coming for Robert Brickey. He is 1-4-3 at the line. Christian Leitner has done a terrific job with the Blue Devils. He gets a breather. He's scored eight points and garnered eight rebounds in this game. 68-35 Duke. Stripped away by Brookie. Quinn Snyder puts it home. 19 for Snyder. Far and away a season high. Ten minutes and five seconds left. 70-35 Duke. Still a load of time left in this game. It was Robert Bricky, Phil Henderson, and Quinn Snyder still in the game. You can definitely be sure that uh, Mike Krzyzewski still wants to keep them sharp. He wants to get them particularly a little bit of confidence and in a game like this this is what gets them rolling this is what gets them motivated for the next game after all they have lost three in a row up until now Bricky with a jam and let's include robert Bricky in that 72 38 duke because one side it comes off ryan davis is in substitutions. Duke does not ease off at all on the defense. And I believe we had a timeout called by Clemson, and we do, and that's the last one that they can use. 9.22 left in the game. Mike Krzyzewski's Duke Blue Devils running away from the Tigers. Now this from Natural Iron Player of the Game Award brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of chicken. Now this second half, Len Elmore, has been the exclusive property of the Duke Blue Devils. They have hit 14 out of 16 from the field. The Clemson Tigers have scored seven second half points and have hit just three of 12. And you see Danny Ferry on the bench. He has returned with a solid overall game. 72-38 Duke. A block shot by Brookie. Out of bounds to Clemson. Robert Brookie, third in the conference with that, his 29th block shot. 53rd of his career. Well, this time, this is a straight take. At least an attempt at it, and Robert Brickey was having none of it. He rose to the occasion on that one. And Brickey with a steal. Also reached the top 10 in that category in the list. 72-38 Duke. Clay Buckley with a hook. The big fella out of Wayne, Pennsylvania. Makes it 74-38. Duke can seemingly do no wrong here. Long bomb by... Howling is no good. Here's Jones feeding to Pryor for the game. Good pass by Jones. Very unselfish play at a time when he could have just as well taken the shot and padded his scoring average. Duke beat the Tigers in this building by 36 last year, then lost at Clemson. Today, another big home win, and you see that outstanding second-half shooting for Duke. Brian Davis with a rare Duke miss here this half. And running it out is Derek Forrest. He bounces to Pryor. 
score. He got a piece of that one. Give the basket to Jerry Pryor. Crawford Palmer coming in and Robert Porky going out of the game. Good penetration here for Grug. Both defensive men to him. Rather than be side to side, the Duke defenders should have been tandem so that one could pick up the trailing uh, offensive player, but no one was there. Nice layup. Palmer controlling. Moving in. Rejected by Colby Brown. Nice block shot by Colby. Pryor. And the Jerry Tigers did a nice job on that break. Well, when Clemson has to play instinctively, they do a pretty good job, particularly on those uh, advantage type breaks. But it comes to the half court offense, and they've got to set up because they've had problems all day. Kubek missing. Jones rebound. There's another man that Duke would like to get moving on the outside shooting department. Greg Kubek is two for 20 coming in from three point line. There's a long bomb by Forrest. That was an NBA three point attempt. David Young off the Clemson bench to come back in. And Forrest will rest his elbow after that attempt <laughs> going to the Tigers' sideline. Well, when you're that tired, as I'm sure the Clemson players are, you know, you don't really have your legs. And you can't, you can't hit a shot like that unless you've got your legs. 74-44, Duke. 7.20 left. Crawford Palmer. Kubek had it, lost it. Palmer dives for it. And it's going to belong to Clemson. Good hustle by Palmer in there. They're going to start giving degree of difficulty for these slots for the ball here. That's great form. Seven minutes left. Howling, that's a travel. Kirkland Howling trying to do it himself. I would believe that um, Cliff Ellis at the last timeout by Clemson told his team, look, you know, we don't have any more timeouts. We're not going to be able to stop. But let's do some of the things that we know we can do on offense. Be unselfish. Try to move the ball around and get some good shots. But you just can't go one-on-one -on -one and expect to even cut anything off of this lead. Bill Henderson, as you see the turnover story, going to the Duke bench. He had nine rebounds today to go along with 11 points. By the same token, Duke is working their half cut offense, trying to be precise, and that's what you have to do in the blowout, regardless on, regardless on which side that you're on. Buckley. And the, it's Brookie picking it up and dunking it behind his head. Well, Robert Brickey got away with coming from out of bounds. He didn't really have position. And I don't believe the referees had on that one either, but at this point, what does it matter? Oh, counted. A three-point backer from the wing by Young and a foul on John Smith. Duke foul, number 33, John Smith. Must be great range. That's about 27 feet. Did he call bank? Robert <laughs> Palmer, number 34, back into the lineup. Watch for Brookie as he goes out of bounds. Foots out of bounds. Ball comes back in. One step in, one foot out. And Robert Brookie got away with one on that one. Oh, Fred Barricat's going to cringe when he sees that one. 6.06 to play. 76-47. Duke is leading here and at the line. Young completes a four-point play. But as I said before, that Brookie play doesn't matter. That's highlight for me. <laughs> Six minutes left. 76-48. Duke leading Clemson. Palmer outside. Here's Bricky faking. Duke's very content to run their half court offense. They don't get the shot. Although Palmer's going to have to work on the shot. A big man like that gets the ball in the paint. You've got to look at the basket now. You were never one to shy away from any play in the post. Putting that ball up at the basket? When I got a chance to shoot it. <laughs> I played <laughs> I played with Tom McMillan and John Lucas now. Come on. 78 48, Duke. 520 left. If I wanted to shoot it, I had to go get it. Robert Brookie, 15 points today. Tipped. Jones has it. And a foul on Crawford Palmer. Well, one thing that's a tribute to this Clemson team is out of gas as they are, they're still putting forth the effort. They're still crashing the offensive boards. That time Jones did a good job and good second effort. 
to the free throw line for the Clemson Tigers will be Ricky Jones. Shooting for Clemson is number 25, Ricky Jones. He has scored seven today, making his seventh consecutive start. And that's his eighth point. His season high is 11. Nine points for Jones. 78-50. open that time on the pick and the roll back to the ball. But he probably didn't get the ball because he hasn't been willing to shoot it. Palmer. There it is. Nicely done on the low blocks. Good ball movement by Duke and that's the way you have to work on your half-foot offense. Great experience for these guys who haven't played very much. A 30-point lead for the Blue Devils and Palmer comes away with the basketball. Out of Brian Davis. Bricky. Yes. Robert Bricky has scored 17 points, 10 here in the second half. And he's having a fine overall day. He's had two assists, a couple of rebounds, four steals. And he puts that with eight for 12 floor shooting. Young, too long. And Bricky the rebound. Tried to feed uh, Kubek. Bounce pass would have sufficed on that one. Under four minutes to play in the game. 82-50, Duke. Kubek. Charge. Good cut by Greg Kubek. Problem is, you've got to be able to stop knowing the defenders are there if you're going to make that pivot. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 3.46 left to play in the game at Cameron Indoor Stadium. It is Duke 82 and Clemson 50. Will return in just a moment. Three minutes and 46 seconds left in our ball game. Duke 82 and Clemson 50. The Tigers bring it up. Now a Sunday afternoon that is certainly going to go down in the Tiger basketball annals as an interesting day indeed. We're fellas suspending... 57% of his offense and 59% of his rebounding for one game. Two starters missing. And you see Pryor missing the outside shot and the foul on Duke inside and it's on Clay Buckley. Clemson, I think back to that first half, Lynn, it was 26-25 Duke. And Clemson had three opportunities to take the lead. They never could do it. They played even till about the last two minutes of the first half and then Duke made a quick spurt Clemson had a couple of turnovers Duke built a nine point lead at halftime and you were wondering if Clemson would have enough to go the distance wow, but the one thing you, you didn't figure is that for Duke to play perhaps their finest half of the season suspensions are no in the final 20 minutes today well as I said before I'd be very interested to find out what they talked about at halftime and if the word pride came up because the guys came out in the second half and I'm talking about the Blue Devils overplaying, executing, doing everything they necessarily had to. The funny thing is, they had it in the first half. Maybe they were trying not to lose rather than trying to win. Robert Brookie puts it in. Second half, you could see a completely different personality where a team was going out there just with winning on their mind. Colby Brown hitting the first three-point basket of the season for him. He's got seven. 84-55, Duke, 2.53 left in the game. Clay Buckley. Bangs it in. Buckley has scored four. It's 86-55. Well, Clemson can do nothing but play behind the Duke big guys, and they've got, they're going to have a field day inside. 86-55. Duke leading. Duke standing around a little bit. A little bit of confusion in their half court. But that's one of the luxuries of having a lead like this. You can work on these things. 
tipped out by Young. His leg. James is George Corgan for Duke. And coming in for Clemson, here is the team manager, Dennis Hoff, getting to play the final two minutes of this game. He played high school basketball at Clarkston down at Stone Mountain, Georgia, and averaged 16 points per game his final year. He usually films the games, and today the films are being made of him. 2.02 to play, 86-55, the Duke Blue Devils lead. And I'd say we've probably got a 60 share in Stone Mountain, Georgia right about now. <laughs> Here's Crawford Palmer. Kubek. Rebounded by Jones ahead to David Young. Now let's see if they get him the basketball. Here's Young firing and hitting. That's Young a three-pointer. Three. David Young has hit four of them today. He's got 17, a career high. Well, he can get set. He looks relaxed when he shoots. Palmer scrambles and gets it over to Davis. Buckley. Plays in a nice job of catching, turning, and scoring. And it's important for him to turn, as you say, because the Clemson defenders aren't even playing. And you got to see what the defenders are. Then you take your shot. Jones missing. And ahead, Davis. Backcourt violation. Uh, Greg Kubek gives it to the Tigers with a minute 10 to play. Now, all these guys have been helped out by the manager at some time during their career. It would only be the right thing to set up a play for Dennis <laughs> Hoff. Oh, yeah. Show him how much you appreciated his, his help. There it is. Oh, I thought he was going to take a three-pointer. <laughs> and he traveled. I thought he was going to take the three-pointer out of the corner. Well, no one paid much attention until he got the ball, and then he comes into the forest there. <laughs> and there's a steal. And with a big jam, David Young. 50 seconds to play. 88 to 60. Duke is leading. Now Dennis can tell the grandchildren one day <laughs> he played it in Cameron Indoor Stadium. George Bergen gets into the end. 90 to 60. Ahead, here's Ricky Jones. And a foul on George on Crawford Palmer, I believe. Now it's on George Bergen, his first. 33 seconds to play. You see Cliff Ellis gathering his Tigers here. 90 to 60, Duke leading. The Blue Devils go to Georgia Tech next on Thursday, and they'll carry to Atlanta a 4-3 ACC record. Clemson will have the North Carolina Tar Heels at home on Wednesday night with their turn at Campbell, Cash, Kincaid, Davis, Bruce, and Mitchell. Ricky Jones hitting his 10th point. Tigers, Young leading the way today with 19, 13 for Forrest, 11 for Fryer, and now Jones with 11. 90-61 is the score. And a near steal, Davis has it. And here's coming out of the back with it is Jerry Pryor. The Young, over to Jones, no, rebound. Here's Hall. Crowd wants him to shoot it, and they take the ball away. Up the floor, it's to Davis. And a dunk by Davis. 92-61. Five seconds, four. There it is. Hoff. Yep. Air ball. Nice and that's the ball game. Mike Krzyzewski. Talking to Cliff Ellison. Oh, these guys go through the wars. They know what it's like to lose in this conference. And sometimes the decisions you have to make are not popular ones with your fans. But uh, certainly the moral character and convictions of Cliff Ellis coming out today. And his ball club put up a game fight in that first half. It really got away from him in the second half. But I don't know as well as Duke played what anybody would have been able to do against the Blue Devils. Offensively, defensively, in the second half, they were outstanding. And they not only break, they smash a three-game losing streak. 
92-62 is the final score. Duke over Clemson. 92-62. They failed to put up a free throw by Jones on the scoreboard late. So it is an official 30-point victory today for the Duke Blue Devils. Big crowd filing out of Cameron Indoor Stadium as Duke wins it by 30. 92-62 the final. We'll be back after this from Natural Life. And some of the principals involved in this Big Duke victory are joining us next. And we'll start with Danny Ferry. Dan, first of all, uh, congratulations on the victory. I know you guys were hungry for one after the three-game losing streak, and you really put it together in that second half. Yeah, well, we really more, needed more than a victory. We needed to play well. Uh, I don't think in the first half we played as, uh, as good as we needed to. I think the second half, our defense, and we just executed all over, and it was it was a great win for us. I just had a chance to see your numbers. How's the backfield? Excuse me? How's the backfield? My backfield's really good. I just got some ice on it now um, for precautionary uh, medicine, but it feels really good. Well, okay, Congratulations. That was a Thank you. good overall team performance. Thank you. Next up, we're going to talk to uh, Robert Brookie. And Robert, can you hear us? I'm not sure that Robert can hear us over there. Robert Brookie. Bob Rathman upstairs. You can hear us. No, I don't think he can hear us, but we'll be back. We're going to hook uh, Robert Brookie up here with an appropriate earpiece, and he'll be talking to us in just a moment here at Cameron Indoor Stadium as Duke wins it over Clemson by 30. 52 over the Clemson Tigers, and one of the Duke standouts today for a great overall game with offense, and defense, and rebounding, steals, Robert Brookie. Robert, congratulations. Thank you very much. I know it felt good to get that losing streak behind you, and as Danny Ferry said a moment ago, more important as is, is it was for Duke to win, more important to play well, and you did that today. Exactly. We, we looked to execute and uh, run out half court as well as our fast break, and I think we did that today, and it's something we haven't done in past games, and the little things that really hurt us in the past, but we, we executed and took advantage of all those things today. Robert, this is Len Elmore. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, all right. Now, let me ask you a question. Not only has your team played well offensively, but you in particular, you're on quite a streak. Is there something that you've been doing differently in the last couple of games to maybe get involved in the offense? Well, I've, I've been a little more aggressive as far as taking my shots and driving to the basket, and uh, I was a little tentative in the first half, and uh, in the second half, I looked to take advantage of some of those things, and I think I did it fairly well. Now, when you talk about the half, the first half, the team seemed a bit tentative. What did you guys talk about at halftime with Coach Krzyzewski? Did he read you the riot act, or what happened? <laughs> no, uh, we, we uh, looked to execute our defense. We, we tried to smother them like a blanket as far as uh, uh, contesting the passes and pressuring the ball, and we did that very well and, and was, were able to get on a big run. Okay, Robert, congratulations on the win. Good luck down at Georgia Thank you. Tech. Thanks. The next man to speak with us is the floor leader, the general at points, Quinn Snyder. And Quinn, this is Bob Rathman upstairs. You can hear us okay? Yeah, sure can. Terrific. You guys have taken a lot of heat the last couple of weeks with these losses, and maybe you in particular because of the outside shooting, but boy, you've really got it going today. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It's something uh, that we really needed. We haven't been playing well, and the heat's been deserved, so uh, we're just happy to get back on the winning track today. When last year you hit 45% of your three-pointers, you were 29% coming into the game today. But right off the bat, Clemson was sagging with their man-to-man, -man and you were able to pop them. Uh, has the three-point shot, or, or perhaps the lack of it, been on your mind somewhat? Well, I think it has been. Uh, it's been kind of a secondary thing for me through the course of the year where I haven't really been looking to take the shot. And uh, Coach has been work really working with me after practice and uh, just not losing faith in me. And I think my teammates picking me up, and I was just happy to see a few go in today. Gwen, did you feel like that second half has maybe the best half you played all season as a team? Yeah, I did. I think the biggest thing we did is we really came out hungry, and uh, that's something that's been missing this year in, uh, in a lot of our games, and we're going to need that. We're not the most talented team around, and we really have to play, play together and play very hard in order to win. Congratulations on a terrific game. Thank you very much. All right. Quinn Snyder of the Duke Blue Devils. He scored 19 today, had three assists and two steals to lead the Duke runaway from Clemson. We'll be right back to our Holly Farms players of the game for Duke University. You just heard from our star Quinn Snyder. He had 19 points today and three assists. And for the Clemson Tigers, and this might be a coming out party for this freshman, he's got a world of talent. David